Ranger Stop here in Orlando. We are so excited because this is a special edition of Uncensored Talk, actually Uncensored Live, and I am here with the cast of Gem. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> give it up, give it up, give it up. I personally am so excited because I grew up on Gem, and I spend the whole day people coming up to me saying, oh my gosh, you're my childhood. Well, you ladies are my childhood. Aww. You're my childhood, so Aww. it's like, oh. <laughs> I know, right? I get a moment, I finally get a moment. Um, so first of all, I want to introduce you. Well, I'll let you introduce yourself because you're you're that amazing. I couldn't give you a proper introduction. Aww, I'll start here. So <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> My name is Samantha Newark, and I played Jem and Jerrica, the speaking voices of Jem and Jerrica. Yay! Hi, but you're really here to hear me, Patricia Alice Albrecht, the speaking voice of Pizzazz. Wow. <laughs> Head of the rock group, The Misfits. I love it, I love it. Gem and the Holograms and The Misfits are in the house today. Way to plug your band, yeah. Patricia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's important. Exactly, and this gentleman on the end is Jeff X. He's actually their manager. He works for Ranger Stop. He made this happen. The ladies are here. He worked with Mikey and the whole team to make sure they were here. Yes. So Jeff, hello. Hello. And from what I understand, you are a walking, talking Wikipedia of Gem. Correct. Yay! <laughs> so he's here. I know. So, so we will. We're going to ask him some questions to see what he can give us. Um, but this is the question everyone always asks me. What was your audition process like? Because they always want to know, how did you get this, this role? Because it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, well, I mean, I was one of many people in Los Angeles, young yeah. girl, and uh, pursuing my dreams and auditioning for a million different things. And uh, I had an agent. Uh, I was with a big agency, mm -hmm. and then my agent at that agency left and started a boutique agency. Nice. Yeah, so nice. it's nice to be a bigger fish in a smaller pond, and you always kind of want that. So she opened a voiceover department, wow. and um, I'd done a lot of auditions for commercials and on-camera stuff, and Jem was like one of the very first things the voice of first animation thing that yeah. I had ever read for, and I got the lead, well. lead, lead in the show, which was pretty fantastic. Yay! And yeah. how about you, Patricia? Um, similar. You I was with uh, Sutton Barth and Venari in Los Angeles, my agency, and went out on an audition. And oddly enough, because um, there were so many people at the audition, and I was so hungry <laughs> and tired. <laughs> Um, I sort of channeled my angst, my hunger, my insanity, and my rage into my audition, which seemed to be exactly what Wally Burr, the director, wanted. Wow. So, I mean, that's the thing. A lot of times it's um, the situation and the moment you're in your life and yeah. the reason these things kind of all fall into place and it happens, you mm -hmm. know? I think that's mm -hmm. what a lot of people... But what year was it that Gem actually came out? Cause 85. 85, yeah. oh man, yeah. 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 <laughs> and it, it ran for, for quite a while. It did. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing about Gem is it became kind of like a cult, like following kind of a show. It's similar, yeah. like Power Rangers. Like mm -hmm. who would have thought mm -hmm. 30 yeah. years later, cause you told me you just celebrated yes. 30 years. Next year's 30 Next years. Next year's 30 yes. years, almost 30 years yeah. that you would be here talking to fans. What is that like, talking it's, to the fans? It's bonkers. It's, it's and wonderful. It's completely surreal and um, everything that we could have hoped for and more, like beyond my expectation when I was doing the show, I, I, I don't think there were even fan conventions back in the no. day. Like there weren't. Yeah. And there was no social media, so you didn't quite understand the levity of the show even when it was happening. Right. Because you're not like in millions of kids' living rooms. You know, mm -hmm. you're just kind of going on the next audition and then going to your wonderful job doing gem. Yeah. And then, you know, just living your life. So to have this opportunity to, to actually see the fans, meet the fans, hear the stories yes. of their childhood, and hear how Jem actually went out into the world and get that feedback yes. is mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. incredible. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So doing the show, you had to obviously vo do the voice, but Jem and you know Pizzazz, they both sang. They had bands. You said, good way to plug your band. So do you both <laughs> sing? You both sing, correct? Well, Samantha sings, but mm -hmm. I was cast because I matched the singing voice. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So I matched as Ellen, Ellen Bernfeld, right? Wow. Um, out of New York. And actually, the series was created, the music was done first, and then the speaking voices were cast against the singers. 
second, as I understand it. Yep. Wow. So it had nothing to do with my beauty or my <laughs> talent. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sure that played a part. <laughs> I am sure. Because it's funny when you see someone do a voice and you see them do it live, yeah. they, ex like their expressions, and yeah. it's like they really brought mm -hmm. life to mm -hmm. that character, you know? And I, I talk to a lot of voiceover actors because, you know, on the road and doing the conventions, there's a ton of, you know, there's just a ton of really cool people yeah. Yeah. that are, you know, that are the heart of these shows. And they, they, they brought something to my mind. They, they said, you know, they're, they're all actors. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly. one thing that people don't realize. So I know you both have done other acting jobs. What are some of those jobs that you've done? Oh my gosh, I, I did a slew of um, like on-camera commercials. I was nice. like the McDonald's counter girl, welcome to Big Mac's birthday, you know? Nice. <laughs> polyester uniform and I did a- Those I did are good a, gigs. Yeah, they were, <laughs> they totally were, and Payless shoes and Kodak and a bunch of things. And um, I did a cheesy, well, I shouldn't bash the movie, that's not very nice, but anyway, everybody has to have a horror movie in their, oh, in yeah, their arsenal, one. like I, a B yeah. horror movie. I love so, it. Yeah, I did one of those and- um, yeah, and all the while focusing on my music because I've always done that. So nice. Yeah. Yes. How about you, Miss Patricia? Well, thank you. Um, and I'm glad you said that because yes. I've never distinguished myself as a voice actor. Right. I'm I'm an actress. Actress. It doesn't matter whether I have um, a makeup on or not, uh, or clothes on or not. Except you you would want me to have my clothes on. <laughs> Trust me. But um, that it's just that is my work. And I started yeah. out and I did lots of commercial work. I had a very you know ingenue look, which yeah. I still try to hold on to as much you as possible. You got it, girl. I was got it. many shows. I was the first April in The Young and the Restless. <gasps> oh, my God. I love Young and the Restless. I still watch no. it to this day. <laughs> and um, Midnight Madness. So I was in Michael J. Fox's first American film, as I understand it. And, we were, and you know, lots of fun yeah. people. And, uh, you know, Angie and Eight is Enough and um, Ghost Dance, which was a horror right. film. Married with children, <laughs> many, many different. See, he knows my life. <laughs> Remington yeah. Steele. Oh, work with Br Pierce Brosnan. What? Oh. Uh, I met him and his wife. They're yeah, they're yeah. Lovely. very uh, lovely. lovely, very good sweet. to look at. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice to touch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Just like this. Just like this. <laughs> Nothing bad. No, Nothing let bad. our minds go. Let our minds go. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> well, that, the reason I, I, I. I specifically wanted to say that you guys were actresses because that was one of the things that I talked to, you know, Jim Cummings and he's, you yes. know, the voice of Pooh Bear and Tigger. I sat next to him. Yes, yes. Yeah, he's and lovely. Yeah, and I mean, and I, I talked to, you know, Veronica Taylor who's like Pokemon and, and the thing is, is what people don't know is that the reason they're so good at their job is because they're actors yes. and actresses. And, and they brought up a really good point of you, you don't, you can't use your hands and you can't use your expressions and your face. You got to do it all through your voice. How do you do that? How do you how do you push well, it all out? I I did use my whole body. Yes, you did. And yeah, more than that, <laughs> and um, used lots of expletives in my in my recording. But I also want to say that if there's anyone in the audience who's ever interested in pursuing the field of yes. acting, that you begin with theater, because that is the root of of acting. I agree. And what you look for is a good story because the stories are the things that connect people and connect hearts and become the lasting, most important part of your work, which is what has made Gem and the Holograms last to this day because they were and are morality plays. Yeah. And they were well-written, and that gave us the opportunity to do a job because it was already well-written. Mm -hmm. And as you progress, you will look for what is the heart and the meat of the story, and then you just add your, your salt and pepper Yay, we yeah. like that salt and pepper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so every day, I know when you guys go to cons, people come up, and the, the biggest thing is, what's your advice mm -hmm. on how to get started, mm -hmm. on how to, you know, and there is there is a certain way to, to go, mm -hmm. and if you, you branch off from acting to voiceover, there is, it's, you know, it's two different animals, you need both, right. but what is your advice to them? Um, I would say get into a voiceover workshop. And if you're lucky mm -hmm. enough to live in a city where voiceovers are really prevalent, such as Los Angeles or yes. New York, mm -hmm. um, get into a voiceover workshop that's run by somebody, like Sue Blue, yes. who played Stormer on Gem, yes. used to Yay. run those. And so yeah. how incredible to yes. be involved in 
her world teaching you the voiceover business, the voiceover art, mm -hmm. and also getting your demo done by professional people that understand yes. what you need, because mm -hmm. everybody needs a voiceover demo. That's how they shop you. Yes. So with the multitudes yes. of different voices and you know, all that good stuff. Plethora of what, characters. What's your advice? It, that's pretty much the same yeah. thing. I mean, I could talk at length and uh, tell you much the same thing. And my, yeah. you know, my husband has a studio, and that's partly what we do is help people. If you want to build um, a demo reel, find me beyond imagination yeah. on Facebook. <laughs> That's my, my uh, alter ego. But yes, you know, oh, thank you. You never know. You never know. But, you know, there are ways to talk and find out. But uh, the bottom line, st act. Just acting. start acting. Acting class. Wherever you are and yeah. get into local theater and yeah. do it. And see if you love it because that's the heart of what will keep you going. Because right, you have to love it. You have yeah. to love it. And then to create characters and, and what, you know, you've got to, they all have something different. Like you said, yes. that it was that angst that you had that... Mm -hmm. Made you made pizzazz come alive. She was feisty. I loved her. Plus, <laughs> plus you were getting in trouble, and you're steeped. You become steeped in a community of like-minded individuals, who which expands your network of people who know where things are happening. So you yes. can ex expand your resume, and you want to start working and collecting all that. Well, I did it. I was an extra here. I was on camera here. Whatever. Yeah. And also, so much of the the voiceover. Well, with acting in general, is is listening, that's such a huge part of it is, is, you know, paying attention and listening to direction, taking direction, being able to hear a communication of a director saying, no, the tone needs to be a little bit more like this and just having an intuitive oh, yeah. sense because it's not always about what you're projecting and giving, it's yes. also like being able to hear and change Yes. The performance, yes. you know, yeah, that's no. a huge part of it too. I agree because so. even with acting, I think a lot of people think, "Oh, it's a fun job, it's a fun gig," but mm -hmm. it's work, it's and fun. you mm -hmm. do have to know, you know, onset etiquette. You do yes. have to know. Like I remember going on a voiceover audition, and I've got a very young voice. Like yeah. I sound like a twelve-year-old, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. Which is great. Yeah, yeah, you know. And and I, many casting agents have said, "That's great. That's great. You could be a boy. You could be a kid. You can do it forever." Um, but there was an audition where they were like, "You know, you got." A, we need a deeper tone. Mm -hmm. And so I started talking, you know, I started talking from a whole other place of my body. But yeah. you have to be familiar with your body. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I believe acting and improv helped me. I mean, if yes. you would have seen what I was doing just to get that deeper voice out mm -hmm. of my body, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, Molly Burr was really, oh, sorry. Yes, please <laughs> jump in, jump in. I want to hear. Um, the voice director for Gem and the Holograms is Mr. Wally Burr, who yes. is also the voice director for Transformers, G.I. Joe. Inspector Amazing. Gadget, Amazing. Scooby Doo, Amazing. Hanna Barbera, like oh, <laughs> Scooby Doo. So and oh, he's yeah. the guy behind all of that, and he he worked with these girls. He was their director on Gem, and uh, I know he put them through some grueling experiences <laughs> to get the emotion it's out. It's a lot of work. Yeah, including I know Louise Dorsey, one of the misfits, Jetta with the black hair. I know one one thing I did with her. She mentioned that she. Uh, Wally was like, I don't care what you have to do, but make it come out and make it come out good. And he, she had to scream and sound like she was in pain. And he made her pull her hair in the in the booth. Like he made her, know that's he, right. he made her yank her hair. He's like, yank it. Like do what you got to do. Just get, get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. And yeah. and she, yeah. And, and the the scene I believe was that her leg was stuck on a railroad track or something like that with her boot or something like that. And the, yeah, he made her yank her own hair just to get it out. <laughs> <That> <laughs> he wasn't is. playing around. But no, you really have to take yourself there. You know, mm -hmm. you've mm -hmm. got to go there. Mm -hmm. um, so, what's your? What do you have? Can I possibly ask a okay. favorite episode of Gem? <laughs> mm, from a fanboy point of view. Yes, I want the fanboy. <laughs> Give me the fanboy right uh, now. Oh wow, there are so 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 many. Uh, I would, I would probably have to say. It would have to be. You can give me a top two, three. Okay. You can't pick one. I I I love the talent search when they. It's a two-parter when they introduce a new misfit and a new hologram. They introduce the Latin girl. She becomes a new drummer, Ooh, and I then the it. British misfit Jada. She becomes a new misfit. I like that. It just changed the whole dynamic. And then I like um, Out of the Past, which I know is one of Sam's favorites because yeah. it goes. It's a backstory, tell uh, showing about how Jem and the holograms grew up because they're foster sisters and their mom passed away wow. their father passed wow. away it shows i gotta like go back and like watch it like, netflix netflix, <laughs> netflix because it's like it's all coming back to me 
But it's like, I can't, I mean, what do you remember when you're young? You know, it's yeah. like, exactly. I mean, they'll come up to me and ask me about a Power Ranger, specific Power Ranger episode, and I'm like, what do you remember when you were 18 years old? Like, yeah, <laughs> I don't remember happen. my day-to-day. <laughs> I can't even, you know. Or I'll watch it and not remember even doing that. You know, yeah. it's such yes, a crazy weird. thing. That is mm-hmm. weird. Yeah. It's, it's, it's um, very, uh, the show, I mean, it was very dramatic. It was funny. It was campy, but it had a lot of uh, serious, dramatic moments. It was death and family loss, drug abuse, um, backstabbing, Huge love story. affairs. Like it was very Melrose Placey, uh, yeah. uh, revengey. Oh, <laughs> I'm Reven- going to Netflix right now. <laughs> 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 I Lastly, I would say my th- my third favorite is the final season. The opening, of the final season, is when they is called the Stingers Hit Town. Is when they br- introduced the third new band, which is the Stingers. It's a guy lead singer <laughs> with two backup girls. Oh, I love So it's kind of like a Black Eyed Peas type yeah, of thing. And yeah. it's a girl with two guys and it was something like that. And, and, and uh, it sh- that changed the whole dynamic because he becomes in love with Jem. And you all know Jem in the Rio. And then just, yes. it turned it into a love square. I, <laughs> I was going to say, I love like, the, the fact that there was the acting, there was the story, there was the fact that you, got, you girls were young and you were s- singers. And then the music came on. Like It was so mm-hmm. such a journey. Yeah. Yeah. Such yeah. a great piece. One awesome thing, too, I, I would yes. say, lastly, is that uh, the singing voice of Riot, the leader of the Stingers, who couldn't yes. be here with us this weekend, supposed to leave, uh, uh, he is also the vocal coach for Lady Gaga and Alicia Keys. <laughs> so There you go. <laughs> See? It's, it, it goes beyond. It goes, <laughs> that's why I yeah. say it's... Uh, um, Gordon Gordy. And yeah. then Townsend. Townsend. Yeah. People <laughs> always say, oh, I want to become an actress, or oh, I want to do voiceover, but you have to really build your resume bu- because it's a career, mm-hmm. and you're not just a voiceover actor. Right. Mm-hmm. You're not just an actress. Right. Mm-hmm. You're truly a you know, one, two, three, four punch, you know, you gotta kinda do it all. So, yay, okay, before I open the audience, if you have a question, go ahead and start lining up so we can get a couple questions from the audience. But before we ask the audience a question, um, can we get a little bit of that gem voice and a little bit of that pizzazz? <laughs> Even just, just, just to wet our whistle. Well, we used to do, uh, what I, I loved the public service announcements. Yes, At yes. the end where, they, w- you know, Jem would catch somebody stealing and she'd take them aside and be like, you know, that's not a good thing to do and you could get in trouble and you could set yourself up for failure and whatever <laughs> the spiel was. And then always at the end, the tagline was, because doing the right thing makes you a superstar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm like, I don't know how old I was, but I'm like five again. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about the right thing? Just have fun and do it for yourself. Join me, Karen Ashley, as we hit up some of the biggest cons in the United States and Canada. I am here at Power Morphicon. I am in Orlando, Florida at Ranger Stop. I'm at Rhode Island Comic Con and catch up with some of your favorite icons. You guys are going to lose your mind when you see this show. And I am so excited because I am here with the beautiful Christy Romano, Mr. Austin St. John. I'm Nikia Baris. I am Catherine Sutherland. My name is Steve Cardenas. We have the amazing Miss Michelle Nichols on the show. I'm Karen Ashley, and join me for the next Uncensored Talk. When I was a kid, I used to love your show. I think I was about 10 when I last saw it. Well, Netflix. So my <laughs> my <laughs> memory. My question is, uh, when you, and this is for both of you, when you guys were actually on the show mm-hmm. doing the voices, and stuff. How did that feel? How did, How did it, it feel? I mean, for me, I, I, I was so excited to have a job, I to know. have landed a <laughs> job. Like a paid gig. Yeah, a paid gig. <laughs> plus doing something that was so much fun. And I was in my element. I w- it, it wasn't a side job. It was doing what I loved, doing what I had wanted to do since I was a kid. You know, voiceovers, it's part of the 
realm, acting, singing, you know, the, the whole shebang. The whole shebang. Yeah. yeah. So I was thrilled and I was young and it kind of started my independence for me. I got to get my own apartment and move out and have money to do things and you know, it was it was a wonderful experience. And plus getting to work with some of the most amazing mm -hmm. people in the voiceover Best business yeah. was an incredible blessing. Working with Wally, working with Patricia, mm -hmm. Charlie Adler, Sue Blue, all of them, you know. Legends. It, yeah, legends. <laughs> it, it was incredible. And uh, I sucked it up like a sponge and, um, yeah. So how, do you, how, how do you get into it? Because I do a couple of voices myself. And um, I don't know how to actually get into voice acting, but I would like to. Good question. Good question. You want to take that on? Good question and long answer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Many different ways. And I'm sure. um, you know that there, you can research it on YouTube or, or you know online, or you can we can talk after. You know, there's so much, so much. But well, again, I'm start acting. Get as much acting experience as you can. Get in an acting class. Locally, wherever you are, in community theater, um, at your church or wherever, school. Um, I got a degree in theater. That helped because I was then in al already in an established community that was connected to my agent. And from there, I started do lo doing local commercials and things like that. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, my, what is your favorite all-time gem song and misfit song? Oh. That's a good one. That's a good one. There's, there are a lot. Well, my favorite gem song, I mean, there are quite a few. They're, the songs were amazing. Yay and Bryant and all the musicians, incredible. Um, but I, love, I love the theme song, the original gem, theme song. Gem is excitement. The original theme song. Ooh, gem. Yeah, the original <laughs> theme song. Was yes, yay. yeah. I, I'm not really a big fan of me and my friends are gem girls. I, I didn't understand why they did that. But, yeah. but the first one, because it had gem and it yeah. had the misfits. Yes. It had yeah. both bands, you know. Yeah. Rocking, so. yeah. Out of my way. Out of my way. Uh, <laughs> which, by the way, out of, a lot of people don't remember this, but um, Out of My Way, which is the Misfits' first song on the show, is actually the first song aired in mm. the entire Gem show. So Gem, really? yeah. you had, you, the Misfits' songs played first before Gem. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> there is it, just <laughs> Hey, guys. Big Hi. fan. What's your name? Uh, my name is Ray Mar. Nice to meet hey, you. Ray. Um, I have a question. Um, so obviously, uh, Gem and the Holograms, the movie's coming out, and that's going to be really awesome. I'm excited for that. Um, are you guys involved in any way, or has the director or anything contact you, just out of curiosity, or is that like a surprise or something? Well, it, it was lovely about um, in May of this year, I got a message um, through my social media, through my Twitter page, actually, which I was so glad that you. I checked. I know. Because <laughs> there's so many Check portals, your and you're like, ah. I you know. know. Too many, right? Yeah, Keep there up. are. And mm -hmm. uh, so I checked the message, and it was a, a message from John Chu, the director. And okay. he, he is a really big fan of the cartoon. He grew up with it, like you guys, and has been wanting to make this film for a lot of years. And he invited me to do a cameo. So oh, cool. it's hey. top secret. And it's oh, already been sorry. shot. Like I, I can't say tell anything. you who I am yeah. in the movie, <laughs> but um, but I do have pink hair. So yeah, awesome. yay! Right. So <laughs> Thanks, it's guys. Like a, it's a it's a live action movie. Yes. It's not the yeah. Yeah, oh, it's I live action. There There's a whole new like the girls are fantastic. Mm -hmm. The holograms are amazing and. Um, and when it do we have a, a date? Do we know? October 23rd next year. It's uh, right before Halloween. Well, hey, ladies. Hey. Awesome. Hi, what's Again, your name? Uh, Brian. I uh, just want to say, like, watching Gem as a kid, like, all I cared about was the colors and the music and the fashion. But watching yeah. it as an adult, there's a lot of heavy storylines. Mm -hmm. One particular that I really enjoyed, I think there was, like, album release. Two albums were being sold at the same time. It was, like, marketing, advertising, which mm -hmm. is kind of heavy stuff for the inside music industry. Yeah. Uh, for you two ladies, uh, what subjects were you really proud uh, to be to be? talking about on the show? Good question. That is a good question. <laughs> Anything that had to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I always say that, too. Like, whenever Aisha had a close-up, I loved it. It was very simple. <laughs> very simple. I have a shallow mind. It's fine. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all episodes were pizzazz, was like, right. <laughs> getting yeah. into well, lots of trouble. There was, I mean, every single episode had the angst of 
you know, the misfits and the holograms battling it out and then all the multitudes of different characters siding with each other. And I think at the end of the day, I just, I, I, as cheesy as it may sound, I just love the message of kindness and that kindness won, wins out. Kindness actually triumphs. And I think that that's forgotten too much today. And it's, it's a quality that should be revered. Yeah. And so. I, if I can add one quick thing yes. that really this com, um, cartoon was one of the very first cartoons aimed at young girls, tween agers, so right. that they had something to follow and have as a role model. So uh, Sam and I, many of us, all of us, played young girls, the Starlight Girls as well, mm -hmm. in the Beautiful. episodes, her foster girls. Mm -hmm. the, and so dealing with those children, or you know, the messages that came out of that, which were, again, like extensions of the morality place, was really fun to do. So. Yeah, and you, I, we need the fanboy right now. What, 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 some <laughs> of the, what were some of the core moral things that kind of came out of Jen that you remember? The misfits nothing? causing chaos and yeah. making mischief, <laughs> <laughs> and the stingers doing the same. Right. Um, no, I, I like I like the whole morality of stuff, you know, with the family and and the family loss and the relationships and yeah, like all all the dramatic elements that came with with ev all the episodes, the realistic dramatic, yeah. you know, the dramatic stuff. I like that's what I loved about it. We've got a, a yeah, beautiful go ahead, go ahead. cutie patootie that is here. Oh at any time a young girl wants oh to ask a question, she gets the mic in my world. Oh. A real quick intro to this one. So this is my daughter, yes. Genesis. Hi. Say hello. Say hi. Hi, sweetie. She's a little shy. <laughs> a little Alaska's shy, right? It's all right. It's all right. Um, I told her that when I was growing up, I watched Gem and the Holograms, and I loved it. Yes. And uh, she said, oh, I don't know, Daddy. That's one of those old shows that you like. I said, sweetie, give it Watch a shot. It. Yeah. She watched every single episode. Oh, nice. Oh. Pretty much. Pretty much. She told yeah. me Pizazza's backstory. That whole refresher that you went through, you go, uh -huh. I don't remember all of that. Yeah. I sat down and watched some episodes because she reminded me a lot about it. Was it yeah. was something you wanted to say to them? You wanted to say hi to Jen and Pizazz? You can wave. Aww. You can <laughs> <laughs> She's, She's like, I just so can't, can't get it out. I kept this from her for the whole year. She didn't know you guys were going to be here. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I didn't tell you. I told you today. Yeah, we've. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say hi. Just say hi. Can I shake your hand? Yeah. Can I shake? Yes. Yeah. 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 Go, go, go. You don't need me. Go. Yeah. yeah. Bring her up here. Come meet Pizzazz too. Yeah, come <laughs> on. You're good. How are you? I'm Karen. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. I don't know. She didn't even want to say hi. How are you going to get her to sing the theme song? Come on, people. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we, before, we'll all sing it as a group yeah. with her. But yep. before we do that, I want to know what are your social media because I know you're traveling the world. I saw you just last week at Rhode Island Comic Con. Uh, so we're in different cities every week, but I know you probably keep a schedule up. So yes. how can they find you? Um, just go to samanthanewark.com, my first and last name, and it's got all my social media sites on the front of my page, and I love to talk to the fans and say hello. I do adm I admin my own sites, so it's lovely to hear from you guys. I will write you back. <laughs> yes. And Hi. Patricia. And find me on Facebook, <laughs> Beyond Imagination. And Beyond Imagination. And we'll go from there. Thank yes, you. and Mr. Jeff X, how can they find you in case they want them to come to a convention? Oh, Ranger we Stop. RangerStop.com. Ranger Ranger Stop. <laughs> but right. the one thing I wanted to add, one last thing about the upcoming film, is that um, uh, to uh, know that it, this is a collaboration from uh, Universal and Hasbro, and it's really awesome because the guys behind it are mostly horror guys. They're the guys behind uh, The Purge. Insidious is Blumhouse Productions. Nice. So it's it, and also John Chu is one of the guys It'll behind be the the G.I. Joe film and the Step Up films. Yeah. So they're the guys behind this and the producer of the soundtrack and one of the producers of the film is uh, Scooter Braun, who is the producer and manager of Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber. Nice. And Usher. So, <laughs> so the music's gonna be amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. We've the already heard. She's she's heard some amazing. of it. I'm envying her because she's already yeah. heard some of it. I haven't. She's yeah. she heard it. So, so we gotta watch it. 2015. I'm gonna be in line for the Gem movie. You better be there with me. So let's wrap it up, all of us together.
I, I hope I remember all the words. Let's sing the let's sing the theme song of Jam and, and sing loud because you know we need help. Come on. Jam is excitement. Ooh, jam. Jam is adventure. Ooh, glamour and glitter, fashion and fame. Jam, jam is truly outrageous. Truly, truly, truly outrageous. Whoa, jam, jam. The music's contagious, outrageous. Jam is my name, no one else is the same. Jam is my name, but we're the misfits. Our songs are better. We are the misfits, the misfits. And we're gonna get her. <laughs> Thank you for watching Uncensored Talk. Stay tuned Thank for more you. live at Ranger Stop.